Hey, friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast, where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City a lovely place to live. I am super excited today because I've got my beautiful wife, Carly, with me, <laughs> and this is her first time on the podcast. I'm so excited. I'm excited you're here. You're going to make it awesome. Thanks. So, and we're here with a friend of ours, Ben Holland. Hey. Hey, Ben. Hey. How's Thanks it going? for having me on. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you um, sometimes hang out at a, a school, I hear. Is that... Mm. Yeah, I, I spend I spend a lot of hours over at a place called Providence Academy. Providence Academy. I've never seen you there. Yeah, well, it's, it's, a, oh, no. it's a small Christian school over there uh, near the ridges. Uh, yes. Yeah, over on and, Creek Road. Yes, I joke. We oh, see yeah. you, you there familiar. every time we're Very there. Familiar. Ben is there. Yes, he is, it's kind of my job. Now, when okay, so tell Providence Academy. Sure. Yeah, Providence Academy is a school Christian school. Uh, we're in, I think, our 27th, 28th year, uh, somewhere in that uh, somewhere in that time frame. So a, a, a medium age school. We're not brand new, but we're not like 150 years old either. <laughs> so for our listeners, classical, I mean, that you do read current information or is it yeah. only the classics? Like? I, I would say this. <laughs> you know, a lot of people, I would say classical, if you sum it up, it's a whole bunch of fancy words, but a whole lot of common sense. Gotcha. Uh, we want to teach kids how to think. Right. That's what it really boils down to. There's a there's an idea of kids getting prepared, uh, and you can prepare them in a few different ways. And if you go back in time, a long time ago, you know, a few thousand years, they had two different types of education. There was a servile education that they gave to slaves, and they were like, "We need you to turn this wrench, chisel this stone, do this thing. Don't think about it. Just do it. Mm -hmm. uh, produce for right. society." And then there was an education for free people. Yeah. And those are the people that had to vote, that had to lead their organization, lead their church, lead their community, uh, and to be voting citizens. And so they gave those people what's called a liberated education for free people. Mm. Uh, and so when we started Providence Academy, I wasn't a part of that, but when it started, uh, right. they were like, we want our kids to be able to think. Uh, we want them to think critically, not just be producers for society. And so what kind of education were they doing? Because I think that we can all agree that the educational system is kind of gotten a little bit, a little bit sideways. Uh, maybe is not doing as well as we had hoped. Mm -hmm. uh, and so our founders said, "Okay, what were they doing before all that got sideways?" Mm -hmm. And so let's do that. So it has the term classical in it, but it's it's nothing new. Uh, right. It's just right. teaching kids how to think. And it's Christ centered. Absolutely. That's the that's the critical part of the school. Is I, I always call that the lifeblood. Uh, and you know, of course, we have Bible classes, and there's going to be this. Um, the Bible is going to be a part of every single subject. We believe that God created all things. And when we study these subjects, mm. we're looking for the fingerprints of God on every single subject. Mm -hmm. And so that makes the school really special. But I would say this too, that, you know, if you, you know, put a bunch of Bible verses on things and said, okay, here's how we're going to do it. You're going to end up what Jesus called whitewashed tombs. Uh, and I would say education is relational. It's not transactional. Mm -hmm. And God could have communicated the gospel the way he wanted, but he sent a person to mm. to live with us mm -hmm. to walk along with us mm. you know he poured out his blood his sweat his tears for us and so that's how we try to communicate the gospel to the families that we partner with is our teachers come alongside those kids we're just living life together and that's really what makes us a christian school that's awesome so great and we have christian there our son christian is there and oh, yeah. he loves it and we just love that he's there we wouldn't have him anywhere else oh he's fantastic yes. great kid fantastic Thank and we're you. glad you don't call us on a regular basis yeah. he's so in your office. <laughs> so i don't think he's ever been to my office which I... that's a pretty yeah he's doing pretty good he's I doing think pretty he's, well i think he's pretty sneaky is the thing. okay yeah there's that. there's always that kid <laughs> okay so this is a johnson city living podcast you live in johnson city you, <laughs> did you grow up in johnson city born and raised in johnson city many generations of johnson city in my family so yeah long time uh kelly her she was born in johnson city her parents were born in johnson city Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So deep roots. I think grandparents were in the same Sunday school class together. Oh wow, uh, that's crazy. Yeah, we. Both, Kelly is your wife. Kelly's my wife. Yeah. If, for those Kelly. listeners that don't know, Kelly should. Uh, and uh, she, she, she's, <laughs> she's a good person. awesome. She, yeah, we we, we got married in the same church that both of our families got married in. Oh wow. So yeah, kind that's of a so cool. Special. Yeah, that's deep, awesome. Deep roots here in Johnson City for sure. Yes. Oh, that's so cool. And. You have a family, I think. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, I got a family. I got uh, Rose, who's in second grade, and Tim, who's in kindergarten. Okay. Uh, Rose's eighth birthday is on Monday. Okay. Very excited about that. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Big that is, that's a good one. So, you 
went to school at ETH as well? Oh yeah, go Bucks. Okay, mm -hmm. and then tell us about the story. Where did you get your degree in? Where? Sure. Uh, so went to, of course, went all the way through here. Town Acres, Liberty Bell, Science Hill, ETSU, just like my parents, just mm -hmm. like Kelly's parents. I think I've seen a statue of you over somewhere in town. <laughs> <laughs> there was like a huge mural of me in the uh, admissions department for a long time. Oh, nice. Uh, wow. And so when kids from Providence would go to ETSU, they'd be like, there is a giant. Yeah. Come uh, to ETSU and be like me. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So that was, that was always funny and a little bit disturbing. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so went to ETSU, got my undergrad in education. Uh, and then I taught at Northside Elementary School oh, cool. uh, awesome. for, for a while. And then I got my master's degree in education administration from Liberty. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. And I used to Very live a cool. block from Northside. Northside. Okay. Yeah. 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 So cool. tell me about your transition from Northside to the Christian school. Yeah, absolutely. So, I, you know, I, I knew I wanted to be in education uh, really from the time I started actually working out at Doe River Gorge. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a camp counselor out there and I just saw the impact that you were able to have with with children. And so I was like, OK, I'm going to go into education. And I, I went all in. I read this uh, book called Teach Like Your Hair's on Fire. Mm. And so I was teaching at Northside. And I don't know if you guys know a lot about Northside. It's a fantastic school. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 90 percent uh, minority, 100 percent free and reduced lunch. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a title it, one. School, it's a right? title. What does one that school. mean? So that and that's basically that. Uh, that it means title one. Yeah, it means title one. It title means, one means it, it title means one. title, title one. two. It's based off of the socioeconomic uh, right. of the people Makeup. that that yeah that it serves gotcha. uh, the, it serves that community. And yeah. so I loved I loved teaching there, and I I did all kinds of crazy stuff. So I opened up school an hour early, and I would walk through the uh, neighborhoods oh, that cool. were that were there that my kids. Uh, were living in and I would pick them up. Oh, nice. And oh, walk wow. them to school. And we'd start school an hour early. That's uh, awesome. And then I taught through lunch and then I would teach school for maybe an hour or so after. And then I would walk them home and help them with their homework on their front porch. I had like camps, like when spring break or Christmas break or whatever, I had like science camp and math camp at the wow. school. So I would open it up uh, because a lot of those kids, they were um, deficient in their, their standardized testing. Sure. And so yeah. trying to get them the education that they needed uh, to be able to get to that proficient or advanced section. So that was a big part of, of what I was doing. I was really, I was going all in. I mean, I was there every night till, you know, 11 o'clock at night, you know, grading papers, preparing for the this next lesson. This was pre-Kelly and Tim and Rose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, sure. Yeah, it was, uh, so Kelly and I were dating. Obviously, we actually started dating uh, right after she was still in high school. It was her senior year, my freshman year of college. Gotcha. Okay. But, um, and she's like super supportive. She's mm -hmm. like super wife. Uh, she's the best. And so I was, I was working through that and I was really, I was really invested. Uh, and then I remember one day that there was, a, there was a change. Um, I was teaching in lunch and I had a young lady that I was working with. Um, and, uh, we were eating the, you know, if you ever had, School food. Everyone ate school food mm, at. I at like Northside. the square or rectangular pizza. Yeah, rectangular pizza. pizzas are great days. The baked chicken days, not so good. No. Not so great. It's a little got a little no. bit dry. Well, uh, <laughs> I used to dip it in like my milk. Just yeah, to... oh, <laughs> yeah. so not... it didn't pucker your lips when you that's ate right. it. That sounds terrible. So we're eating this really dry chicken, and she's like, "Mr. Holland, where did chickens come from?" Because if you were eating lunch with me, mm. that means you were struggling with your reading. Uh, <laughs> so we're we're working on reading. Third grade is what I taught. Uh, and I was like, oh, honey, I failed you. Eggs, chickens <laughs> come from eggs all day. And then she took that a step further and she was like, yeah, but who makes stuff? Ooh. Oh, she was asking a really fundamental question. Sure, yeah. sure. And I realized that I had joined maybe the only profession in the United States of America where it was illegal to share my faith. Mm. Right. And I was like, oh, no. I maybe have made a mistake. <laughs> and so, of course, I shared the gospel with her and walked her through that and told her she was loved and she was a son. Mm. And she was the daughter of a king mm -hmm. and that he had a plan for her and all those things and got to walk her through that. But I and I will say this. I'm a huge fan of public schools. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. some of the best missionaries I know are public school teachers. But I think you have to be uniquely called to that. Yeah. And I think at that moment, God was like, hey, this is not what I'm calling you to. Okay. Uh, and so I was like, I'm, I'm probably just going to go sell signs for my dad. Cause yeah. your dad, yeah, he's the operations manager at Snyder Signs. Nice. And I was like, I sell signs, do that. You know, if I need I to have this living. conversation, I, right. it'll be great. Yeah. But my wife, she actually went to Providence, 
And I used to make fun of her. I used to call her homeschool. And not that there's anything wrong with homeschool. I'm sure I'll get like blown up on the internet and make fun Here of homeschool. We, we love homeschoolers. There we go. Love, love you guys. Uh, if, you, even if you button your polo all the way to the top, still love you. Uh, so, Jorts. Yeah. yeah. So I used to make fun of her because I just didn't have a paradigm for Christian education. I, just, I had no understanding of it. And so she was like, you just need to, before you, she's like, I know you love teaching. I know you love working with these kids. Before you walk away from this career, I want you to just go take a tour, see what it's like. And so I went on a tour and it, it blew me away. Like to go into each classroom and hear the word of God on these kids' lips and a joy that was, that I had never seen before uh -huh. in a school setting. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, whoa there's something different. And what I was really experiencing, I think that the, the presence of God was, was in the school mm -hmm. and, and at uh, Providence. And I was like, so I went into Jerry's office. So uh, Jerry he, Williams was a head of school at that point. Head of school at that hey, time. Jerry. Hey, hey Jerry, if you're out there, Jerry. We love you, Jerry. Served as my mentor for a mm -hmm. long time. And I didn't know him at all. Yeah. And I went into his office and I was like, listen, I've got to work here. I don't know what you need. You need a janitor. You need a lunch lady. You need whatever. But like, I need to be here. Mm -hmm. wow. And so they, they kind of invented a position of Dean of students uh, for me. And so I started working at Providence at that time. And it was uh, fantastic. I served as Dean of students there for five years and loved it. I was cross country coach and got to invest oh, in wow. the lives of these Is kids. Is that when it was and, back over off of the Bristol highway? No. So they had, they had changed over to uh, our current campus. By okay. that time. Gotcha. Um, so that was great. And then I went to, uh, I got a call. So Jerry set me up. He always he's always setting. He's stuff always up. working. If you know he's Jerry, a he is a he connector is and a half. Such a connector. Yes. So he was like, "Hey, they're looking for a new head of school at this Christian school, in, classical Christian school in Morristown." Mm -hmm. and I was like, "Okay, good for them." And he was like, "Well, your interview is on Thursday." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, "I don't want to move to Morristown. Like, I have no, I you know." But I was like, yeah, "I was." He was like, "I've prayed about <laughs> this." <laughs> Yeah, and was, you're going. <laughs> you're going. Uh, I was 27 years old. I was like, okay, I've you know, I'm way too young for this type of position. So yeah. I'll, I'll go, maybe get free a free dinner, and, <laughs> and uh, you know, some interview experience, meet some people. It'll Kelly, be we're going on a date. Yeah, basically. <laughs> basically. Uh, so I went over there. Long story short, they offered me the job, and we prayed about it, and uh, we ended up over there, and it was just it was a miraculous time. I uh, got to see a, God's hand in a lot of things. What's the name of that school? Uh, it's called Lakeway. Okay. Uh, and we ended up building like a seventy million dollar facility there. Holy smokes! Uh, and it was just some of the most miraculous things you've ever seen in your life happened uh, there. And then uh, one night, Jerry texted me at like two a.m. And he's like, hey, we need to get lunch. And I was like, Jerry, you don't have to text me at 2 a.m. to get lunch. Uh, but, That's and when then, he does it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we went to this, like, hole-in-the-wall place in Greenville where we were the only people under 85. Uh, <laughs> definitely. Well, you were. I was. Uh, yeah. And uh, and he was like, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about making a, a transition. Would you want to come in and be the head of school at Providence? So I was like, oh. I need to pray mm. about that. And some family yeah. things were happening at that time. My family lives here, and so does Kelly. They both live at Dover Gorge uh, on the campus. And uh, and so we're like, okay, we got young kids. Timing kind of seemed right. I was like, well, I need to pray about it. And I went home, and Kelly was like, well, I'll start packing, and you can pray about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we've uh, we moved back here. I've been the head of school at Providence for uh, three three years now. It was um, like three yeah, it's three. flying by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it goes it goes really fast. So in our third year, it's been great. Uh, school has been uh, growing and thriving and lots of exciting things happening at Providence Academy. Absolutely. We've been so happy. I mean, we do truly love Jerry and he did a great job, too. But and honestly, we were a little nervous when the transition was happening. Mm. But you've done such a great job. Oh, like, thank we you. could not be happier with how things are going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, uh, you know, the people that put the foundation of the school in place really did a lot mm -hmm. of work. And so the foundation was really solid uh, to be able to walk into a school that's truly Christ centered, that uh, is academically excellent. You know, not a lot of people know that the average ACT score for last year's graduating class was 28.5, uh, which you're going to have a hard time finding a, uh, a stronger school really in, in the country mm -hmm. uh, yeah. when it comes to those, the academic rigor that's there. But uh, I would say any kid can be successful here. And it's the result of doing the right things over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like we just have nothing but geniuses. We just start 
when they're kindergarten, we're like, hey, we're going to have a, a high standard, but we're going to give you a high. I would say if you have a high level of standard, right. you have to give a high level of support sure. to re reach that standard. So you're um, like a genius factory. Right. You don't start with genius. No, no. <laughs> Uh, and, and and really great kids, great families. Partnering with families is a big part of it. Uh, it's a you know God gave. I mean, if you look at the Bible, you don't see a single school. If there was a school in the Bible, we would all change the name of our school and we'd be like, "Where that? That's the name that's of our right. school." Yes. Yeah. You know, but God's yes. two institutions are the church and the family. Uh, and so you can't. God gave that responsibility to educate children mm -hmm. to those institutions. And so our job as a school is to just come alongside those institutions, support them in what they're doing, uh, give them all the resources that they need. Uh, and that partnership is really is really what's special about Providence and makes us so successful, uh, I believe, is having putting that partnership first and not saying, well, we're just this, we're the school experts and your kid here and don't worry about what happens in these walls. And when they come home, they'll be educated. Right. Uh, it's it's actually reverse mm -hmm. saying, hey, you guys are in charge. You're the driver's seat. No one knows your kid as well as you do. Mm -hmm. And God right. gave Kelly and I, the, the ability to have two children, mm -hmm. um, not 560. They're not the yeah. Winsteads. No. <laughs> no, there's some homeschool families that would give a run for the money. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, but he gave you the ability to have the children that you have yes. and gave you that responsibility. Yes. And so that partnership is really important yeah. for us. I had Mark, Mike awesome. Marion on the, on the call or the podcast last week, and he said, you are the perfect parent at the perfect time, and your child is the perfect child for you you know mm -hmm. the lord has doesn't make any mistakes there you know Absolutely. so i think yeah. i said that's very comforting yeah because yeah, a lot of days is. i don't feel like the right parent at the right time no man mike marion okay. talk about somebody that has invested in <gasps> in johnson kids. city oh my gosh you know, he the yeah coach well everybody if you know him you call him coach, yeah. coach. Uh, and we serve on the board there together yes uh and what a uh, what a ministry mm -hmm. uh to this area now when i was in college i worked at coalition for kids uh, with Randy Hensley, yeah. which is similar. I'm going to try and yes. get him on here too, Randy. God, oh. got to have Randy. Come on. Yeah, yeah, that'll <laughs> like, be a hard up Friday my, for sure. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> have to get some bigger, yeah, bigger chairs. Yeah. yeah. We'll just yeah. make it work. <laughs> Man, Randy's, Randy's great as well. But we were, uh, Johnson City, I think, and when you talk about living in Johnson City, mm -hmm. I don't think that you can talk about living in Johnson City without mentioning those two organizations uh, and the impact that they have made on making johnson city really an incredible place to live i agree i agree, I agree. Mm -hmm. what's um what's one of your favorite things in johnson city <sighs> man that's tough like I, living here i think that living in johnson city if you're out there and you're like oh should i move johnson city what are the what are the pros i would think that uh one of the things is geographically mm -hmm. uh it's very unique mm -hmm. i, I mm -hmm. love doing like outdoor things i'm an eagle scout grew i was a raft guide backpacking guide all that kind of stuff awesome. and the fact that i can access all of those things within a 10 minute drive mm -hmm. uh that if you want to go on a beautiful hike there's like literally in johnson city there's buffalo mountain yeah um yes. that that is you don't find that anywhere else mm -hmm. uh, even in morristown you would think but to in morristown you got to drive 50 minutes to an hour to get to anywhere that is is accessible mm -hmm. uh where johnson city you've got dover gorge you got rocky fork you've got all these things there are right a thousand there. trails i mean within an app yeah, 20, 30 minutes. And like my kids lighting their bikes up on uh, tannery knobs. Oh, there's, yeah. there's just so many Great. things to access. Uh, downtown has really come a long way. Yes. Uh, you know, I remember when I was growing up, you only went downtown. I don't know if you were lost. Uh, but or you had to buy like fancy <laughs> right. pants or something. Yeah, you, maybe yeah. you went to Mass and Guild yes. and your mom needed a new dress and you'd right. have to sit in there for three hours while she tried stuff on. Yeah. Right. Uh, but, you know. The, the fact that uh -huh. downtown is now a place like when it's like date night, Kelly and I were like, we're going to go to downtown and then we'll figure out where we're going to go from yeah. there yeah. Uh, to have that type of uh, then the new uh, new playgrounds and things like that that are going up over there uh, near Founders Park. I think that's going to be great. There's okay. just so many things to do that. But you also get the benefit of a small town. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, you could still have these amenities maybe in a Knoxville, mm -hmm. but in a Knoxville, you're not known. Right. Uh, like when I when I was trying to find here, you were like, okay, we're right above C.S. McCullough. So I walked into C.S. McCullough. I know Randy. Yeah. Randy was like, oh, yeah, yes. Colin's upstairs. It's like yes. the fact that you can go, you can, we can go into a restaurant, and I don't know half the restaurant when I walk in there. Yeah. Uh, I think that that is a unique, um, that's a unique It's piece. like cheers everywhere yes. you go. Everybody yeah. knows your name. And I think that it's a pretty, um, not a whole lot of people leave Johnson City. Mm -hmm. uh, I think once you find it, I think when you grow up here, uh, and some people might relate to this. You grow up here, you're just like, oh, I'm going to get out. I'm going to go somewhere. And then you go somewhere. I lived in Chattanooga for a little bit. And then you're like, wait a minute. 
<laughs> like, I that, go. That, yeah, I want to go like back. Johnson City better. <laughs> that was a really yeah. special place. You know, it's got all the benefits of Asheville uh, with none of the negatives. Yeah. Um, and yeah. most of the benefits of Knoxville with none of the negatives. Uh, you know, ETSU, man, they've really come a long way. Yes. The football stadium's a great venue. Unbelievable. All it, I think that there is a there's a lot of great churches in the area. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Choose from you got Redstone and Grace. We and love Redstone. And, yes. And, yes. Yeah. A yeah. incredible, uh, incredible faith community mm-hmm. in the area that's very active, and I think that that's another thing that makes province or that makes Johnson City a special place. Now, these are all really good things, but what I need to know is, um, which what's your favorite restaurant in town? Because I like to <sighs> so hard. I so like to know where where to go eat. So it depends on the situation. I love Firehouse. Mm-hmm. There's something like special yeah. about Firehouse. Yes. I think the yeah. service is incredible. Uh, of course, anybody that worked here in college, they called it Fired House. Because <laughs> <laughs> <Love it. laughs> Tom Seaton awesome. runs a tight ship. He does. Yes. And he's yes. passing yes. the torch to his boy. I know. And he's doing a fantastic job. He is. Um, and so the Seatons run a great restaurant. Really and uh, it's just, there's something very uniquely Johnson City about Firehouse. Okay. Absolutely. So barbecue. Barbecue. Firehouse. firehouse. Okay. I, you know, sushi, you got to go label. Okay. Like if yeah. it's date night, Kelly, that's. That's going to be her first. Label. Yeah, we had Raphael on. Okay. Uh, I wasn't here for that, but Colin did a great job with him. And, man, we learned so much about all his. He has 10 restaurants in the Tri-Cities. Wow. And, yep. yeah. Just, and we love sushi. And so that's a do. good spot. I'm a yeah. huge sushi fan. So label, Wednesdays, label you can't fantastic. beat Wednesdays half off sushi. Mm-hmm. Man, that's like they're basically giving it away. I know where so we're going right. to eat tomorrow. Right. There that's you go. Right. Well, um, yeah. And then Timber. Is a newer restaurant. I don't know if you tried we that. We have tried not Timber. been to Timber. It's got some weird stuff on the menu, and yeah. usually I don't like. I'm not real into like hippie yeah. food stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I was, I was pleasantly surprised with the okay. menu and uh, enjoyed it. Well, We've been saying we Leighton need to go. had uh, Nathan Brand on this podcast, so it's oh, back. I'll find okay. the episode number for you guys to. But yeah, yeah it was, check that. Finding the comments. I like just right. yelling yes. timber, so I can't wait to go there. <laughs> you kind of. Oh, okay. It, it's got a cool. It's got a cool ambiance. I would definitely say that's a eat in, not take out place because you got to right. experience the restaurant because it's so. It's it's not like anywhere else you would go. Exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, we definitely need to make some time to go there. We've heard good things about it. Yeah, I'm ex- I'm excited to check it out. Um, okay. Did you say, did you tell me one time that you don't work out? Cause I'm also, int- because I like no, to eat, I, I'm also interested in working I out. I do try to so. exercise. Uh, okay. <laughs> exercise is, it. A, is a, is a vital part of my life. Okay. Uh, so. I don't know. Maybe that was someone else who told me that. Cause I was like, well, that's surprising if that were you. But, okay. Tell us yeah, about your. Yeah, it looks your, like he works out. I mean, so, he does. So yeah, tell us about that. your workout. <laughs> no. What do you do to work out? Yeah. So, so I say. used to run a lot. Okay. Uh, and Kelly, if you. Kelly's an incredible runner. Kelly. She's like super talented. She runs all over the place. She's just an athlete, right? She's a great like, athlete. Tremendous athlete. Yes. Uh, she like wins races. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I got plantar fasciitis almost a year ago. Oh. So when the pandemic hit, I like up my miles a lot because I was like stressed and trying to run yes. a, a show uh, and do all the stuff. And so I was like, okay, I'm just going to start like every day. I ran like six miles after. And then my feet started to hurt. And then I, I've been, I don't want to say crippled. But it's almost been a year. And so I've had to like. You still wait. battling it or is it? Better? Oh, yeah. Still battling it. It's oh, terrible. Uh, and so I've had to adjust my uh, exercise routine accordingly. We got a new strength coach, uh, Aaron Lewis, oh, cool. at the okay. school. And so he put me on a program. So that's been a lot of fun. I'm getting ready to change today. So I just did like a, a four month program. And uh, yeah, he's, he's a magician when it comes wow. to like getting you stronger. So I did that four-month program, and now I'm getting ready to switch to a three-month program. Oh, cool. Uh, that'll do – I don't know. I, I find it fascinating. I'm not like – I'm obviously not like a buff dude. But I find like when you work on your body and see mm. the results and you see like how amazing God made our bodies to be able to adapt to yes. different things, yes. uh, it's pretty fascinating. So I enjoy that aspect. I don't diet much. Kelly would laugh. if you guys, uh, I'll sit down and eat <laughs> That's a whole – That's what like, it was. I will eat a sleeve of Thin Mints and not mm-hmm. like think twice about it. That's what it, it was. Girl you told town. me you don't have a good diet. That's exactly well, what it was. My diet is okay. terrible. That's right. Like Kelly makes two different dinners. She makes her like <laughs> self with like <laughs> kale and arugula and <laughs> right. like all kinds of weird mm-hmm. things that I would 
would not enjoy eating. And here's and, a hungry man dinner. For yeah, you. and then yeah. she's oh, like, yeah, he was like meatloaf, lasagna, oh, you know, I like, yeah, I like all the things that are gallon of gravy. Yeah, that gallon of gravy. There, so mm. every Sunday we like have like so we always eat dinner together as a family. It's important for us. Mm. But sometimes I have events and things. But Sunday is like our special day, mm. and we always eat. Uh, we have a Stouffer's lasagna because that's what I grew up on. Oh, nice. and I just love it. And like really a big. Good a salad and then we watched a, a movie together as a family and that's kind of like sunday you cannot schedule anything on I sunday night it. that's awesome uh, and it, we the kids always look forward and to saturdays it. you go yes. to the doe river right saturday we go to doe river so for rose for our eighth birthday so about a year or two ago rose was like dad i really want, want a horse and so i was like okay I'll, <laughs> you told me this <laughs> I, will, I will fix this problem i was like you can have a horse when you buy a horse oh. right uh, so I was like, that'll fix that, you know, and then yeah. she's seven. Yeah, she's seven. She's not going to be able because the horse is like a thousand five hundred dollars. So she she's the most determined person I know. She has a tenacity that is incredible. So so she starts she's like somebody else we know on the microphone. Right? Yeah, <laughs> she starts doing these lemonade stands and she starts going over to our neighbors and she starts picking up sticks and she's breaking and she's you know she's seven years old and so she's like with her little like flyers she makes the flyers and yeah oh, takes them goodness. around so she saved up enough money to buy a horse so that's what she's getting for her eighth birthday wow oh, uh, that's amazing and so we'll keep it out at doe river yeah. um she's my new favorite person that's incredible <laughs> so here's here's my best rose story this like summarizes who rose is so we she likes to run she likes anything anything competition she will compete with you on anything uh, and kelly and i are both competitive with each other yeah yes. so she came by it honest but she entered this race called the goliath and oh, it's yeah. like yeah, a, yeah yeah we know about at it. the gorge so right. there's a uh there's like a kid's race yes. that was like um a mile and a half with some obstacles or whatever but it was like for grades or for ages like seven through 11. Mm -hmm. and there's like you know maybe 200 kids in this race 250. so she trained for it for like three months and she's like i'm gonna win this race so this whole time i'm like listen like let's set some realistic goals like let's say like let's try to run the whole way let's mm -hmm. whatever so long story short she wins she gets third place in the race and she gets the medal she's like cheesing i pull her down i give her a big hug and she just says don't ever doubt me again oh, <laughs> oh my goodness i was like so from then on i just do not like if she says she's gonna do something i just That's don't doubt her amazing you, you just can't she is That's fantastic wow. she is just incredible when it comes to to stuff like that she just has a determination that is is pretty fantastic oh, well that, it's amazing i, I love think, that yeah i think she does get that honestly from you um and kelly I, yeah <laughs> kelly and kelly for sure because yeah. we you know you said all right we're having a pandemic we can't be in school yes. you were determined to like how do i engage my kids and then so we have the night k and i gh mm -hmm. show sure. yeah show tell us about that oh, tell man. us where that brainchild of that was and that was a lot of fun <laughs> so that fun. was in, that was insane so like the pandemic hit about this time last year yeah. so i remember it was we were going into spring break and i had to make a decision on that friday mm. like do i have the kids take their books with them or not mm -hmm. and i made a bad call i just said leave your books like i was like we're gonna school's starting back we're gonna have school it's gonna be fine you know 10 days to flatten the curve whatever mm -hmm. uh, i'm with you very positive <laughs> yeah. it's not a big it's deal yeah not a big deal we're gonna China's be a little place it's not like it's big so over spring break it like of course we all remember it erupted no one needs to recap on that it's not <laughs> right. even it's not over yet what so uh, <laughs> and so that night i had like sounds i'm not like a dream person or you know it's not i'm not uh not, not, not there's anything not no but i was like okay i've got to do something for these kids and so kelly and i you know there everybody has hard times we had a, a, a period of infertility in our life where we were just like it was tough and we struggled mm. and so we watched this we watched jimmy fallon pretty much every night and that was just kind of like our you don't have to worry about anything you can just like lose yourself in his show even Absolutely. before he got political but it was just like i can right. just you could just watch it and, and laugh and you yes. just laugh and so every night we knew we were gonna laugh yeah mm -hmm. and so um i was like man that was a that was like a really a service and so i was like okay i think what the kids need now is the ability to have some sort of normalcy they need to have a face that they're used to seeing mm -hmm. and they need to have a schedule because kids thrive on a schedule yes and so I was like, okay, let's do like a, a show, like the night show. 
Mm-hmm. So I called my buddy Jordy, and Jordy does like audio visual stuff. And he was like, videographer Jordy. Yeah, Jordy, and he did Jordy like, Wetzel, right? Yeah, Jordy Wetzel. Wetzel. He did a great job. Incredible. So I was like, hey man, I need, I need you like full time. We're gonna do this show, right? And he was like. Everybody I had just canceled because there's like no weddings, there's no things. Like yeah. he's like, so I'm yours. Yeah. So we put well, on this get show. A deal now. <laughs> <laughs> every every morning at 9 a.m. we launched. It was about a 45 minute show, and sometimes we would have up to 10,000 people watch this show. Yeah, which That's was amazing. Which was amazing. So we had people all over the world, all over the world, watching this show. To, and then we it was there were puppets, and we did drawings, and we learned, and there was a Bible lesson, and there was a science lesson, and you know it was just like a fun. Mr. Holland would do something silly. Like Every show always yeah. had like an opening, and we like there were no like it was me and Jordy and one other lady who did like the coordinating. There were no writers or anything. Like each morning I would wake up and we'd walk down and I'd be like, all right. Here's what we're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> and I got to like relive yeah. my child. Anything I thought was cool. Kelly, you when, feel like making cookies today? Uh, yeah. We need something to fill in fun. today. Yeah. Fill in space. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so the whole it. family, the kids got to be a part of the skits. Yeah. Because we had to eventually, we started at the school, but then we had to move to my basement. Right. Uh, because of like the lockdown. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, we just moved one night after the show. We picked up the entire set and then we moved it into my basement and we set it up. We didn't miss a single day of the show. Yeah, we, it was fantastic. Did, I think it was 37 straight, uh, 37 straight episodes. It was, it was amazing. It's <laughs> how we, we set our day by the night show. Yeah. We yeah. really did. Yeah. yeah. People it's would be like, like, can you meet me? Uh, nope. Mm-hmm. Can't get on call. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, can't, like around I 10. can't show yeah. that house until about <laughs> 10 o'clock because I got the night show. Yeah, COVID and I uh, got the night show. But that's like consistency is so important for kids. Yeah. Uh, and that's why, honestly. It was brilliant. It was great, and that's why we kept Providence Academy open during this whole uh, during this whole season. Is because I know how important consistency is for kids. Uh, I know that fear uh, can be really destructive in adults' lives. Yes, but fear in a kid's life can really take over. And so, mm-hmm. as a school, we were like, okay, we're not going to have a spirit of fear. We're going right. to, you know, we're going to be reasonable. Mm-hmm. We're going to try to do things as safely as we can. But for the health of these kids. Uh, we're going to be open. We're yeah. going to do everything that we can to give them a Christ-centered education and partner with these families and give them as, as close to a sense of normalcy yeah. as we possibly can. So the Lord blessed us, and we were able to – we haven't missed a single day of school uh, this year because of the pandemic. Now we had a couple of snow days. A couple of them I missed, so my bad, everybody. Totally uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're feeling the weatherman's blues. Oh, wow. so. Like when you're a kid, you're like, oh, man, if I could call snow days, that would be the coolest. Kids, it is not the coolest. No, Gosh. it is terrible. And poor, you, poor, you get up at like two a.m. You're checking road conditions. You might go back to sleep. Then you get up at four and check it again. Did oh, I fall yeah. down when I was outside? No, okay. Yeah, and you're like, what's the temperature gonna do? Yeah. You're trying to watch yeah. it all, trying to make the best decisions that you can because you want to be open if you can. Because right. yeah. there's a lot of families that depend on you exactly. to be open, exactly. and you don't want to let down the kids and not close. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah, and half you know, the people gotta, are always gonna be mad at you. Gotta, right. yeah, half the any disorder, <laughs> any choice you make in that half of the people are going to be mad unless i love days when it's like you get dumped on snow Mm. seven o'clock the night before yes oh it's just like snow day everyone's like absolutely nobody's getting out you get to call it and then you you can just like stay home sled drink hot hot cocoa and watch like home alone can you sleep in can i sleep in yeah um like on a saturday so i've done a new thing speaking of health we always are talking about health i come always like man what yes. are you working on? What are you doing? You, you only get you one body. Have, yeah, you know, right. I plan on it. You know, our bodies are, are temporal. Uh, Except when you eternal. pour gravy in it every day. <laughs> you got to pour some gravy in there. It needs a little bit of gravy. <laughs> but I took out, I did did away with caffeine about six weeks ago. Okay. okay. And that completely, I, I, Masterclass is like my favorite thing. If you guys don't have a su- subscription to Masterclass, after Johnson City Living, it's probably one of the best things that you can, uh, Amen, brother. You can okay. listen to. And I did one on sleep. And so he just did all the science of sleep because I, not that I was sleeping poorly, but right. every now and then I'll do a thing where I wake up at 3 a.m. and mm-hmm. I'll stress for about an hour and a half and yes. try to solve a bunch of problems yes. that I'm yeah. unable to solve. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I like, because you need to talk to other people and you're like, I'm yeah. not going to call. You could call Jerry. He'd be I could, Jerry oh, could text me to try to get lunch. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so I was like, okay, I've got to do some. And it was like, I was starting to get to the point where I was struggling with my alarm. Like the alarm would go off and be like, because oh, mm-hmm. usually I'm the kind of person that like, Alarm goes off, and I'm like, let's get it let's today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, I was really struggling. So I cut out caffeine and did a couple of different, like, changed my light bulbs in my bedroom to, like, a lower uh, wattage and, like, yeah. watch my screen time and 
all that kind of stuff. And so that's completely changed things. So like I've been waking up since then. It was like a terrible week and a half. Well, give people like what kind of light bulb, like what wattage? I just dropped my like the lights in my bedroom down to like 25. Okay. Gotcha. Um, now do you have blue light glasses? I don't have blue light glasses, but I tried like, you know, once I'm done with the screen, then I just read like a regular paperback yeah, okay. book. Gotcha. So you just, you have a certain time in the evening where you say no more screens. Yeah. No more screens. Okay. And then we're like, I, I try to go to bed at like nine and then read for a little bit and then I'm out and then that's it. Okay. So yeah, that's Good. worked out pretty, pretty 10 well. o'clock you're asleep. Great. 10 o'clock I'm asleep. All right. So I've been waking up before my alarm. So I've been waking up at like 545, yeah. 530 on even on the weekends, like this Sunday. That's I, woke what I was up, asking. Yeah. Yeah. This Sunday, I woke up at like 540 and I was like, all right, going to the gym. Uh, and, so, <laughs> and so, I, you know, I went to the gym and got back before anybody woke up and we got to go to church. And I was like, I didn't have to spend any of my day yeah. right. on my exercise routine. Yeah. So. Yeah. So even, awesome. and that's an important part of the sleep cycle is trying to wake. Anyways, you guys are not listening to this podcast for sleep advice. Well, I, I think you want to live I, in John City, not sleep in John City. Well, Maybe. you want it to be a good place. A good City. experience. Yeah. While you're you're there. grumpy and all yeah. worn out because you're yeah. not sleeping well. You don't enjoy Johnson City. Absolutely. You have Gotta, to feel good in your body to be able to experience all the things we have to offer here. All the absolutely. hiking and biking and running and eating yeah. at the label. Eating, eating, and, <laughs> eating at the label, getting some gravy. Doing all the Bojangles things. gravy and biscuits. Bojangles. Go see the oh, trigs yeah. over there. Got to see the trigs. Got to get a Trigs. Bowberry biscuit every now and then. Right. You got to got to live a little. Their Cajun fillet chicken biscuit is just world class. Yeah, we're it very is. blessed with, with the number of restaurants, the number of really great businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in this pandemic, uh, Johnson City's economy and ability to still be successful, mm -hmm. I think, is a testament to a lot of the business leaders in this area. Uh, a lot of our our local government and state government. Government, I feel like I want to commend to them. They've done a, a fantastic job navigating yeah. all the things that that we need to navigate. Uh, and so I think that that's been a it's it's, it's a special place, mm -hmm. it's a special place to live. If you haven't visited, come and visit. Give us a shot. Stay at the Carnegie. Yeah. Stay, rent a cabin. Um, yeah. Experience everything that Johnson City has to offer because there's really a lot here. Yeah, yeah. if you want to look at some houses, call us. We'll Absolutely. You yeah. If, yeah. You, if you want a great you want to move here forever, <laughs> you, you know, really it, love, it's love shocking it how few houses are for sale. Yes, it is because we have tons of people coming from out of the area because yeah. they're hearing about what a wonderful okay. place it is to live in. So yeah. we're moving people here from Chicago, from Illinois. Uh, California, we've got people all over the map coming here. Texas, I talked to somebody a couple of days ago. And so they see all the wonderful things about Johnson City and, and they're yeah, like, we're, we're going right, to make it here. We're right on that point. I feel like there's a lot of places uh, that really struggled. Um, like when I was in Morristown, you could right. tell there was a huge struggle because kids that grew up there moved out. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then they didn't come back. Yeah. Same, so, I've heard the same thing here. Like a lot, if you look at the demographic, um, people graduate from ETS year because and then they leave because there's not any great jobs, jobs. for them. Yeah. Um, and, and so, so I think we're starting to turn that corner. I believe so. uh, Where now, A, because you are, the world has become much more mobile. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden you can work from home. That's what, yeah. And all if right. you can work from home, you want to be in a beautiful place. Yeah, that you is, can look out the window, look at the mountains. Mountains, you want the safety. Mm -hmm. like, even like the traffic is great oh, here. Yeah. You know, it's so like you go great. to a big city and you live for a while right. and you're like, oh my goodness, the traffic. Like, I don't, like I'm frustrated at traffic if I have to sit through a red light twice. Yes, it's that's so what I tell true. everybody. I'm yes, like, it's yeah. so true. Yeah. I got somewhere five minutes late and I was like, I'm sorry, guys. The the light at State of Franklin and Sunset, I had to sit there for two two rounds. Two rounds. And that and drives it was you like, nuts. What is wrong with this picture? Yeah. This has not happened. Yeah, yeah you and can get to anywhere in Johnson City in 15 minutes. Yes. So, yes uh, and so it has that that ability to be able to 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 be able to be uh anywhere you want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the job markets are totally changing. Yeah. And so I yeah. think if you're thinking about bringing a business here, we have an amazing workforce and we have a ton mm -hmm. of kids coming out of ETSU that would be, you, you'd be blessed to have them in your organization. And, yeah. And so you've I got, hope. you've got Walter or you've got uh, Northeast yep. that has okay. some trained technical workers and we, it was, is it TCAT? What's the name of that? Uh, there's like a training facility uh, for skilled, skilled labor. Uh, so yeah, we're, I know what you're talking about. I don't know. I'm not know sure what it's called. Either. Doing a great job there. Uh, we have a lot of college educated kids because you've mm -hmm. got Milligan, you've got King, King you've got Hill, ETSU, yeah. you've got all these college Tusculum, you have all these colleges within, you know, 15 minutes of here. So you've got a really well-trained workforce yeah. 
Um, sure. And then you've got a, a reasonable cost of living, uh, yeah. I think, is, is I key as well. And they don't want to leave if they don't have to. No, no. Right. And yeah. like even the, the tuition at Providence is if you compared it to a tuition of a equal caliber school in like a Knoxville, yes. Yes. we're going to be half. Yes, uh, we're, thankful you're gonna we're so you. thankful for that. We're so thankful for that. Has not gone unnoticed. Yeah, we in yes. the Johnson household. Try to keep that tuition low, but we also however, have a great scholarship. Right, program. I was going to say. Right, however, right. if you can't afford it, yeah, we something can make that happen. happen. We just uh, we've raised four hundred thousand dollars for our scholarship wow. program this year. This year, uh, and so and it all happens that, every year. It's every amazing. single year, Mark Kosak, my hat goes off to him. He's my development yes. director. And we're praying your eye gets better, Mark. Yeah, yes. he's he's better. He's back at work. Oh, good. He oh, had emergency good. eye surgery the other night, so uh, at our, right before our uh, our big uh, banquet, uh, which was a huge success. Thank you guys so much for coming. Yeah, uh, Ken Ham was fantastic. Ken Ham, he was great. Uh, walked through all the things about creation and mm -hmm. what God's done. Uh, but to be able to raise those dollars so that we can have any family that wants their kid to get a Christ-centered education, uh, they they have that ability because those funds are available. Yeah. Uh, so we very rarely have to turn someone down because they can't afford it. Okay. And that's a real that's a real blessing. And all that's privately uh, raised. So we don't take government funds. Mm -hmm. So that way we don't have to answer to government mandates. Yeah. Um, and so we get to make decisions. What's best for the parents? What right. do our parents really want? Uh, we're not even standardized test score driven. Yeah. You know, our kids show up. We take a standardized test and we score in the 90th percentile in pretty much every subject and every grade level. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to be the best performing school in the area. Mm -hmm. But. Our kids show up on a Tuesday and we're like, hey, do your best. Like, right. I don't, my teachers don't, I don't evaluate my teachers based off of their performance on that. I evaluate them on are mm -hmm. they doing the best with the resources they have? Are mm -hmm. they loving these kids as if Christ love as Christ loves them? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, are they partnering with the families well? And are we being good stewards of the resources we have? If you're doing all those things, test scores are going to do this because there's all kinds of outside factors that come into that. But if you're doing those things and you're doing them over, uh, a long period of time, the results are going to come. Yeah. And we feel that we've had teachers Absolutely. pull us aside and, you know, say we are really, you know, praying for Christian this year and really wanting him to learn how to, whatever the topic was that he was struggling with a little bit. And, mm. um, yeah. It's just great. I mean, you've got an unbelievable staff. I um, think so too. Oh, the teachers are, and really they're, they're, th that was a cool part about this pandemic. So when we were we were the only ones in the area open so it felt like we were stepping out of a limb but i yeah. felt convicted that it was the right thing to do yeah but i went to my teachers and i said listen i will pay you none of you will be fired everyone will be in their job you do not have to come to school right uh, to teach and every single one of them came yeah wow uh and that just showed that you know they're not doing this for you know we try to pay them well but they're not doing this for the money right uh, they're doing this because they love the kids and they, they have a deep conviction uh, to serve them. So they all learned how to Zoom, how to do this online they got school mobile thing. really quick. It got, we got, yeah, because we were the only ones doing the yeah, duel. Right. Uh, yeah. so and so yeah, they, you can yes. go today if you want to go online. You can, Christian's online today. She's right. Online today. But yesterday was in class, you know, yeah. and so, so you had that, going, that, that flexibility. And we were the only ones doing it. So all my teachers had to learn how to do that in like a week and a half of in service. And mm -hmm. they they just they did it and they figured it out. And of course, we had some bumps along sure, the way. Sure, yeah. uh, but for the most part, it's gone really it's gone really well. Yeah, I think yeah, the whole spirit cool. of the the body there, I mean, just loves each other and serves one another. And they're working as a, a collective team to really make sure the education's top notch. And yeah. so you can feel that. You can feel they're loving each other and the kids well. It's just it is a special place, and the Lord is just continuing to bless it over and over and over. And we just um, we're thankful for it for sure. They've yeah. got a lot of job security. <laughs> I think that there, were, there was probably a time a couple of years ago where we were like, oh, yeah, we, you know, schools may eventually go virtual. Right. Mm. And I think that we have learned that uh, you cannot beat in-person instruction. Yeah. Uh, it just cannot be replicated. I'd say we've picked up some kids, too, because we're in Oh, class. we have grown so much. So when I started, you know, two and a half years ago, uh, we had about 400 and 425, mm -hmm. 430 kids mm -hmm. somewhere in that area. This next year, we're going to have probably 560. That's oh, awesome. Wow. Uh, so a lot of growth. We're like at the point where all, most grades are really kind of full. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. And uh, But you said you'd never turn anybody away. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I, I, I heard that. I heard that. No, there's quite context. A, there's context. quite well, a context. There's quite He's going to have uh, like a little brood just following him. Like. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we're I'll getting, teach you all. 
we're getting a little bit cramped. Uh, so you know, Lord, Lord willing, we'll start building some things. Yeah, I was going to say we got big. I keep saying we is in progress. I feel like a part. I feel like a part of it. But yes, you guys have big plans to build onto the campus. Yeah, Lord willing, you know, we got a board meeting uh this next month where we'll kind of start talking about those things. It's not great form to do a capital campaign in the middle of a pandemic. Right. Uh, but when you're saying okay, you know, the Lord is sending the students. Um, you know, we have a we have a responsibility to try to get as many kids in the John City area, a Christ-centered education is possible. Amen. And that's another yeah. cool thing about living in John City. There's not a lot of schools like Providence Academy nope. and right. definitely not a lot of schools like Providence Academy in a town the size of our town. Yes. Uh, and so that's a unique that's a unique opportunity. I mean, you can play on probably the best basketball team in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, that's controversial. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could play on the best baseball team in the region. You mm -hmm. can get some of the best coaching. You know, we got Jeff Reed is our baseball coach. He won the World Series. Yeah. Caught a perfect game. Yeah. Uh, Damon Johnson is doing an incredible job with our boys and girls basketball pro program. You know, we played uh, Oak Hill last week. Yeah. Uh, incredible game. You know, they're, they're really playing at a high level. Yeah, our boys need a shout out, don't they? Aren't they doing really well? They, yeah, they had an incredible boys season. Basketball, yeah, varsity. boys basketball, varsity basketball had an incredible season <clears throat> this year. We were able to do a lot of things. Uh, and I think we're only going to be better uh, next year. Yeah. Uh, we're losing a couple of seniors that we're going to miss. We're going to miss you, Chris and Toby and Bryce. But yeah. uh, we got a, a lot of great talent coming Starting up. to build a dynasty. A lot of and you know, our girls basketball team is getting ready to really take another step. Okay. Um, uh, you know, Taylor Price has been doing great. We brought in uh Jaden, we brought we got a couple other girls coming in. We got some of these younger girls like uh Bella Caldwell or mm -hmm. just really developing. Yeah. So it's gonna be exciting to That's see. Fun. And I would say uh, I like to call it not our athletic program, but our athletic ministry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, because that's what we're doing. We're ministering to these kids, and you can do that as a coach on a court mm -hmm. or on a field. Uh, some in some ways that a teacher can't access, uh, and then those coaches get to have you for year in year mm -hmm. out. And if you ever get to go to a Damon Johnson basketball practice, I encourage you because you will leave encouraged. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You'll be like, man, it was just you know he holds them to a high standard. Yeah. But man, the things, the truth that he's speaking into those kids. Uh, on a daily basis, day in, day out, through wins, through losses, uh, is things they're things that they're going to take with them for the rest of their life. Yeah, we're fans of Damon. Oh yeah, yeah. big yeah, time. He does, does a great job. Yeah, he's fired awesome. up. So, what fires you up? Because we got a little fired up Friday. Woo! Fired up Friday. Okay, yeah. Uh, so what fires? I mean, I I'm fired up about right now, Ben. Right now, I'm fired up about the kids at the school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we got a lot of exciting things happening. Uh, we got. It's, you know, when you think of the school, what fires me up is we've got, of course, the Christ Center in the classical mm -hmm. piece. The Christ Center is mm -hmm. first. Uh, but, you know, our academic program, I get mm -hmm. fired up about it. we got a lot of exciting things coming. You've done a lot of great stuff to there. Yeah. Thank you for less homework and multiple yeah. different tracks. Yeah. We've got, you know, you could, we've got AP Biology, AP Chemistry, all kinds of college. You can graduate from Providence Academy with up to 35 hours of college credit. That's amazing. Uh, that's so you, incredible. You're like into your sophomore year at that point. Uh, or, or for you, that would have been like junior. I don't know. Uh, I got 35 hours <laughs> the whole time. They finally were just like, you paid us enough money. You can, here's right. your paper. Yeah. Uh, Honorary degree. Yeah. So be able to, I'm fired up about that. Our arts program, uh, excited. We got Little Women mm. uh, is oh, yeah. uh, the play oh, yeah. that we're doing. When this is year. that coming up? That is, is April or? this, that's this Thursday, Friday, oh. Saturday. Oh, oh, it's soon. Okay. It is right now. So, oh, okay. uh, you can, uh, come and check that out. I'm fired up about that and what right. all the things that our arts are doing. We got a new percussion uh, ensemble that's mm. doing great uh reverend vincent, vincent dial, dial. Yeah. speaking of living in johnson city oh you gotta gosh. know vincent dial we need to put Absolutely. him on here. i'm making a note right now. we need he, he, <laughs> you've got to have him on yes. uh and uh and then i'm fired up about our athletics softball starting for the first time uh so that's great we've got boys soccer girls soccer baseball on um, cross country uh, cross golf. country track Golf. Uh, golf. Forget golf. God, you can't forget can't golf. Forget so I'm golf. fired up about all those things. And just to see the kids being ministered to and, and caring for each other yeah. uh, in those three different arenas that the school uh, provides. Those, that's what gets me. That's what gets me going each and every day. Since you eat so hor horribly, you're probably yeah. going to be an expert at this. Okay. What is your favorite donut in the area? All right. Because that's about to come up. Man. So that's a tough one. So when the when the hot now sign is on. Oh, see, that's me. You're making a hard right. It is, yeah. But if the hot now sign is on, yeah, I'm not really interested. Oh, you don't like them. Like if it's hot now, yeah. I'm like, eh, I'll okay. take it or leave it. You don't want cold and crispy. No, okay. no, it needs to be hot now. So that's a that's a big one. Daylight donuts. I don't know if you've ever been there. 
but if you like a really big donut, okay, uh, okay. they they've got a really yeah. they they're solid, and they used to and they're give, local. Yeah, they're local, and mm-hmm. they used to give all their donuts at the end of the day. You know, they're fresh because all the donuts that don't get purchased, they used to give to Coalition for Kids. Oh, uh, that's wonderful! Uh, I didn't that know wonderful. that. Yeah, so when I worked there, I would eat daylight donuts like pretty much, and you know, if you can eat something every day and you don't get sick of it after like three years that it's a really good thing yeah. absolutely uh, so the daylight donuts are, are solid um uh, that's a solid donut i'm not a huge duncan fan yeah uh i like the I'm not a big cake fan the but... jelly i like the jelly filled okay powdered sugar one i uh, like the manager special it's chocolate covered with like ice inside that's, okay that's my favorite at duncan chocolate, so like Christian a boston Navy. cream situation sort of, sort it's of not like cream but it's more of an it's... icing inside yeah uh, Okay. Awesome. So reason we're special. reason we're talking donuts is because we're getting ready to do. Did you see our coffee uh, challenge that we had where people sent in different coffees yeah. and we t- we tested them all and we came up with a winner. So we're about to do that for donuts. Mm. Was uh, open doors in so, that conversation? Do you know? No one. Oddly, no one sent wasn't. in anything. The, the our what? open doors people uh-huh. in the community did not get it together and send in any. My I kids it off there. My kids love the sweet cream. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, uh, oh, that's a good cream. one. It is yeah. a good one. Yeah, that's a I like this. They're plain it's latte. Yeah, solid. You got it. If you're going to John City, if you're new here, here, come to open check doors. out Open Doors. Absolutely. It's just down the street from me. Yeah. So it's yeah. like one of the we used to like ride there, a bike. Go back up a coffee. Love open doors. I will support you buying a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. And, and Coach Marion uh, yes. is part of that, and they support uh, Rise Up, and so yes. they're a. Uh, I'm sure you talked to him about that when he was on there. Yes. Anyways, yeah. Check out some. They should do donuts. I talk, we should get I them should, into that. Yeah, that they have those that. waffles that you can eat like they're, one oh, a year because oh, there's so good, so much sugar in them. But they're I mean, so delicious, some though. people love them. Some people eat them. I, I would think you'd be one of those people who <laughs> eat them every week. Absolutely. <laughs> they could probably like, even yes. put gravy on it. Yeah, a little gravy, gravy on, there. on there. They do have like a gravy bacon one. Mm. Oh, Gotta try that one out. That's crazy. Well, um, my last question for you, though, is so I ask you about food and I ask you about, you know, working out. But I'm also interested in apart from the master class, which you already mentioned. What are you reading, listening to, or watching right now that you would say, definitely, this is great and you need to. Oh, man. Okay. So right now, I've, I love to read. I'm usually reading like four books at a time. Okay. Uh, I just got an Audible subscription Yeah, uh, so great. A, a, a couple of months ago. So that's like, that's opened up a whole new, uh, an, a whole new deal. So I'm reading uh, A Cold Dish. It's uh, it's like a Western. Mm. Um, it's what the Longmire series is based off of. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you watch Longmire, also a great show. Uh, so it's, it's he's a sheriff. It's like yeah. I like to have like a mindless read. Yeah, sure. I'm also re I've read it, but now I'm listening to it. Atlas Shrugged. I don't know if you're a big so. Oh yeah, we saw that. I, um, I think that that the economic philosophy there I, I find fascinating. Uh, and so if you it. if you haven't read it, it's like super thick. So listen to yes. it. I'm gonna, Audible. Yeah, it's like that's like a fifty-two hour listen, mm. but it's, it's like worth the, it. It's you, an investment. When you, when you when you leave when you leave the book, you're gonna be like it's gonna change the way that you think about things. The premise is all of the main producers of the world go on strike instead of their employees go on strike. They say, okay, fine, we'll all go on strike, and then you kind of see the repercussions mm. of oh, that in wow. an economic system. Nice. Uh, so fascinating read. Check it out if you get a chance. Um, what am I watching? Oh man. So like we, what are we, we like, we're in between shows. Like mm-hmm. we don't have anything yeah. right now. Right. We're just like, Oh, what are we going to watch? So we just end up watching like a rerun of the office. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> so, perfect. I was going to say, we're probably just too embarrassed to say what we're watching right now. What are we watching? <laughs> what did we watch last night, Carla? So we, we, we got a little hooked on the bachelor. We're not okay. bachelor just watchers. A little hooked. A little yeah. Listen, we, we heard that the, the, the bachelor was like a pretty great guy. So mm. we were like, let's just check him out on this first episode. Well, if that then, doesn't work, then we have to stick around and see what happens. And so, you know, I just, I'm just going to throw that out there. Well, we're, and we were hey, listen, we're real people when we watch the, we watch yes. bachelor. So, yeah. um, bachelor. but Did you watch Queens Gambit. Oh yes. yes. That was fantastic. Now that fantastic. was so good. That was a great show. So I didn't want it to end. My wife, we watched the first episode of Virgin river. And I was like, this is all. A Hallmark movie. We watched yeah, the same. I did the same. same. I was yeah. like, it's I was like, Christmas. Hey, we can't watch it. Yeah, I'll say, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't even. She's going to open up a bakery. They're going to fall in love. Right. You know, whatever. I need a, a little puppy. more excitement and I need to, I need, I like some things that have some twists and turns. Mm. Like that's what the kind of thing I like. Gotta have a good like thriller. Yeah. Uh, having, we're, we're watching. So my kids were reading the Harry 
Potters. Oh yeah. And then once we watch, once we read the Harry Potter, then we watch the movie. Gotcha. Oh, so this Sunday's night was Harry Potter Chamber of Secrets, Ooh. and now we're reading. So every night as a family, we get together and like we just like snuggle up and read a book. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and so right now we're doing Prisoner of Azkaban. Oh wow. Mm. They get darker. As they they do around. get a little bit like I think I'll have to stop at uh, Goblet of Fire. And then wait for them to get a little bit older. Maybe. And then we'll, uh, then we can resume once. Is that one before or after Empire Strikes Back? That's, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> it's right <Okay>. after. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk, we'll talk later. It's a prequel. I'll explain it's a prequel. It. I'll explain prequel. It to you. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh, well, cool. those are good. Those are good recommendations. Do you want to grill Ben so. anymore? You want to? No, I think I'm, I, I can be finished grilling him. You have anything? Thank else? you for. <laughs> letting the school run amok for an hour and coming and hung, hanging out yeah. with us and just allowing us to interview you a little bit and learn about you and what you love about Johnson City. And thank you for watching over our child personally, but mm -hmm. over the other 560 of them. And um, yeah, just we're, we're praying for you and we know that you're going to just um, continue to do wonderful things and at Providence and in Johnson City and making mm -hmm. it a better place to live. So thank you. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for having me it's on. Thanks so for fun. thanks for trusting the school with your kid each day. Absolutely. Well, thanks for answering the phone when I called to see if you come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, I do it to you all the time. Yes. So uh, <laughs> turnabout was fair play. I uh, yeah. I appreciate you being my friend. And so uh, yeah. 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 So, well, we love you and Kelly, and we're excited for what's going on. And, and yeah. And so everybody, if you want to learn more about Providence Academy, there'll be a link on the um, John City Living web site and um yeah and then you can get a hold of ben shona hoover at the school will give you a tour mm. and Absolutely. show you all the fabulous things about it and amber lafon's doing tours now too she's, oh, nice. she's great that's too. awesome yeah. so we would love to show you the campus and mm -hmm. um and the vision of what yeah what it's gonna be. new website launches tomorrow Ooh, so awesome. that'll be a whole oh, new fantastic. whole new fresh look jordy I'm worked excited up for us. about that that's yeah. great yeah that's great and it's providence.com Dot com. Dot com. Don't go to dot org. No. Don't, don't go to org. Dot org. Like, Your kid will be great in school. Texas or something. Yeah, probably great, <laughs> great school in Texas. Yeah, but uh, you <laughs> you won't find it. It's here. a long commute. So yeah, it's a long commute. If you go on and it's blue and gold, you know you're at the dot org. Right. If it's burgundy and, gold, burgundy and gold, you know that you're at uh, you're at the one here in Johnson City. Right. ProvidenceAcademy.com.com.com.com. Cool. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. All right. Thank <laughs> okay. you very much. Thanks, Good to see you guys. Thank you everybody. Thanks for watching and listening. Have a great day. Yeah.